Hi, I'm sure you have used Google at least once ever since you started your day today. It's become so much of our daily lives that it's impossible for us to imagine a day without it. We need to know anything about anything in general from food to health, interiors, architecture, diseases, nature, technology, or even something like a hole on the wall. We just enter a couple of words in the search engine and a wide range of information appears in front of our eyes. Do you have any idea how much of information must have been fed to it? Have you ever wondered why Google has been named Google? Can it be that there is a relationship between its name and the quantity of information it holds? Well, before we move to Google, let's see what a different word with a slightly different spelling Google means. It means a number equal to 10 to the power of 100, which is equal to 10 to the power 91 billions or 10 to the power 94 millions. If you understand things better in terms of factorial, this number, Google, is approximately equal to 70 factorial. That is equal to the product of all positive integers from 1 to 70. Also, if you don't like scientific notation, you may call it 10 duotrigentillion or 10,000 sexdecillion. To simply write it, it would require 100 zeros to be placed after 1. Now, the term was coined by a 9-year-old kid called Milton Sirota, nephew of US mathematician Edward Kastner in 1920, who was asked to think of a name for a very big number, namely one with a hundred zeros after it. Kastner popularized the term Google in his 1940 book Mathematics and Imagination. Now, if these are all mere numbers and you are not being able to visualize its magnitude, Let's see if there is anything in the universe that exists in this quantity. How many grains of sand do you think exists in the world? Yes, grains. Well, as per studies, there are 7.5 times 10 to the power 18 grains of sand in the world, which is far far lesser than a Google. What about the numbers of stars in the sky? As per studies and calculations, there are something like 10 to the power 11 to 10 to the power 12 stars in our galaxy and there are perhaps something like 10 to the power 11 to 10 to the power 12 galaxies. So that makes around 10 to the power 22 to 10 to the power 24 stars in the universe, which is still very less compared to a Google. Let's move on to the number of atoms in the universe. Looks like this is definitely going to make a Google, isn't it? Arthur Eddington in 1940 calculated the number of atoms in the observable universe. He calculated it to be 1.57 times 10 to the power 79, which is currently estimated to be 10 to the power 80 and generally accepted. This number is also known as Eddington number. With this calculation, another 10 to the power 20 observable universes would be needed to contain a Google of atoms. Now. Why not imagine an interesting thing here? What if we filled the entire observable universe with sand? Well, even then it would contain only 10 to the power 95 grains of sand. That is to say, another 100,000 observable universes would be needed to add just one Google of sand grains. Mind it, it's not one Google kilos of sand, but one Google grains of sand. I can't even calculate how many observable universes would be needed to add just one Google kilos of sand. <laughs> so, is there anything in the universe that's equal to or bigger than a Google? Well, yes, the number of chess games that can be played on chessboard. Cloud Shannon, an American mathematician in 1950, wrote a magazine how to program a computer for playing chess. In the paper, he estimated that the total number of possible chess games would be 10 to the power 120, which is greater than a Google. This number is called the Sanon's number. Now, back to Google as a search engine. So the founders of the Google company named it Google as a result of accidental misspelling of the word Google, as it signified the large quantities of information it was intending to provide. Now, there also is something called Googleplex. It is 10 raised to the power of a Google 
or 10 raised to the power 10 to the power 100. That is to say, if we were to print a book with 400 pages, 50 lines per page and 50 zeros per line, it would contain 10 to the power 6 zeros. With this calculation, it would require 10 to the power 94 such books to print all the zeros of a Googleplex. If we consider the weight of each book to be 100 grams, then the total weight of books required to write all these zeros would be 10 to the power 93 kilograms. Now, the total mass of observable universe is estimated to be 2 times 10 to the power 52 kilograms. This mass is greater than the mass of the observable universe by a factor of roughly 7 times 10 to the power 39. So now you know how big is Googleplex. Now, Googleplex is corporate headquarters complex of Google and its parent company Alphabet Inc. This word is a portmanteau of the words Google and complex, meaning a complex of buildings. And it's also a reference to Googleplex meaning 10 raised to the power of a Google. Now, there also are terms like Google Plexion and Google Duplex. We'll talk about them in the next video. I hope you now know why Google is named Google and why Googleplex is named Googleplex. Do subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Keep watching.